I'm going to hit the highest flop shot you've ever seen in the history of a driving range. Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to some more Dimple Balls. We have yet again another club review. As you can tell, I'm in my car, which means that this is an introduction to introduce yet another new club to the golf bag. And we're gonna test it out. We're gonna see if I should add this club to the bag. Um, and by clicking on this, you probably already know what it is because I'm not going to really clickbait you guys. It is a 70 degree wedge that is called the Hummingbird. And I believe Rick Shields has done a review on this and a couple other guys on YouTube. We're gonna test it out to see if the amateur golfer, the non-professional Rick Shields skilled golfer can use this club. Is it possible to blade it? Is it possible to hit this thing out of a sand trap? These are questions that I do wanna answer in today's video. So let's get right into it. Before we get into the video, I do want to thank you guys for hitting the like goal on the Kirkland Wedge Set Review video that we had. We will be giving away a set of Costco Kirkland Wedges in the upcoming future. That seems like a really good thing to do around Christmas time, get people a new thing to add to their set to look forward to the next year's golf season. So I know we're coming down to the end of the golf season, but adding these wedges in the off season and then getting out on like the driving range and practicing with them could be really fun. So again, be on the lookout for that giveaway over the next month or two. And uh, yeah, one lucky winner will get the Kirkland wedge set to add to their bag or to give to somebody that they know that might need a wedge set or upgrade at those clubs. So again, this is the Hummingbird 70 degree club. Let's take a look at it on the actual bounce. There is a Hummingbird, it says H7. I don't really know what that means. Maybe just like Hummingbird 70 degree, probably what that stands for. The bounce is huge. This thing looks like a dang driver when you set up next to the ball. I have put it down on the ground and hit it a couple times, but I don't really have a good idea for what I can do with it yet, which is why this video is coming out. We're going to experiment a little bit. And on the, uh, what is that, the cavity, it says Hummingbird 70 degree. And I don't know if that's backwards or not for you guys, but the design looks pretty good. The bounce is huge. The club face is huge. And then right where you set up to the ball on the face, there are two striped lines. And this is not a brand new club. This is my uncle's club. So shout out to my uncle Brian for letting me use this for a video. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of just curious about 70 degree clubs in general. Um, and this one specifically, I don't know how many are out there on the market, if there's any good alternatives to the Hummingbird. But as you can see on the grip, it says Hummingbird. Uh, the grip's in good shape. The shaft, Everything about this club is pretty much brand new. And it's not dirty enough to make it so that we can't use a lot of backspin. So let's get out there. Let's hit it a couple times and see uh, see how well we can do. Also, in other news, if we get 250 likes on this video, I'll give away a 70 degree for one of you guys to try at home. See if you want to add it to your bag. If not, give it to somebody you know that might need some sort of an upgrade at Lob Wedge. But again, 200 likes on this video. 250. Did I say 250? 250 likes on this video will give away a hummingbird to somebody out there. I don't know what this price goes for. I'll probably put this in, in the video uh, at home. I'll look it up, see how much it goes for. Again, I'm just borrowing it. So yeah, again, 250 likes on the video. I'll give away one of these to somebody at in the in the comment section that lets me know what, um, what your highest degree of loft is. I play a 60 degree lob wedge. And again, that's part of the Kirkland set, one that I'm giving away, but is the 70 useful? Is this a good bunker club? I don't know. So again, 250 likes on this video. We'll give away one of these to somebody in the comment section down below. All right, let's get out there. All right, we're gonna see how the Hummingbird 70 degree does around the green. I'm just gonna hit some nice little chips within like 10 yards of the green, the practice green behind me. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from a little bit further in a little bit. All right, we're going up and over the cart path onto the green, hopefully. You can get 
some really crazy loft with this thing. That last one went, went pretty high considering I barely even swung. All right, just a couple more shots to get me up and down onto the green, and then we're gonna try and hit them out of the sand trap and see if it gives us any kind of advantage over just like a normal lob or even a sand wedge. I like this thing. I'm getting a lot of loft pretty dang close. Now all of these lies have been pretty loosey goosey. Nothing really tight as far as like thickness of clovers or something. I'm not really hitting it out of some thick stuff yet. I've only really been playing good lies, but it's been super effective at close range. I can really pop it up pretty easily. Now again, you just gotta make sure you get that bounce down because I feel like the, prox the probability of you blading this thing is really, really high if you don't get that bounce down. So again, keep the weight on your front foot, hands in front of the ball, and that should lower the bounce. Make sure you don't blade it and you can pop it up pretty easily. I'm gonna put this ball in the sand and I'm gonna see how this thing performs out of the sand trap. I'm actually pretty excited to see how this plays because again, it's way higher lofted than the uh, lob wedge. So let's get up here and hit a couple balls and see how it plays. All right, are we still rolling? So I had a couple good sand traps, a couple bad ones. I wanna try something though. I wanna swing fully as hard as I can and nobody's on this hole. So let's knock this thing out real quick. I'm gonna hit it up and over you guys, all right? Might be scary. I'm gonna do it though. I'm gonna hit this up and over you guys. You're not gonna be able to see where this goes, which is pretty unfortunate. But if I can get it up, and over the camera, I think this would be a huge win. So, all right, I'm gonna stand pretty far away, about right here. This really shouldn't hit the camera. If it hits the camera, I might need new equipment, but all right, let's do it. I'm gonna kind of give this thing a nice rock and get it nice up and over you guys. You ready? Hold your breath. Okay, I stuck that thing on the green. So hopefully the uh, light adjusts here. I actually ended up sticking this thing on the green up there on the left. I rolled it past, but that was pretty dang fun. I'm gonna get off the green now because, but I just swung pretty much as hard as I could do it. And I hit it up and over you guys. I'm gonna slow motion that thing down and you'll be able to see how close that ball was to hitting the camera, but. You were pretty close to me and I hit it up and over you. I got the adrenaline rush because this camera is a pretty nice camera. I definitely don't want to do anything to hurt it, so. Yeah, I mean, it passed the full swing test and I stuck that thing. I was probably 30 yards away from the green and I stuck it within 10 feet. I had a 10 footer, but yeah, I mean, seems like a good club so far. I don't really, I guess the downside would be hitting in maybe some thick grass. I don't know, let's try that. Let's test it out some thick grass. All right, we've done a lot of the tests so far. We hit it out of the sand trap. It was pretty successful. We hit it pretty dang hard, but now I want to hit it out of some thick grass and see, you know, where the limitation is for this club. Like so far, it's performed really well in a lot of the uh, in a lot of the tests that we've done. So, thick grass test coming up right now.
you guys the results of those two shots right there. One's dead center green, one rolled off the back. I don't know about you, but that's one thing I'm really looking for in wedges. A lot of them don't really perform well when you're in thicker grass because the club turns or maybe your wrists don't go as fluidly through the grass. But either way, that was a lot better than I was expecting. I'm not gonna lie, I really didn't expect this club to perform that well when it comes to the thick grass test, but it's done pretty good and I think it's because this head is huge. Now when I say that, I want, to, I want you guys to see this from my own perspective. Now I'm coming at you from the side, but check this out and look and see it, how crazy this thing looks when you address a ball. Like, it is huge. It's just such a big club head that, you know, and it's so highly lofted, it really just kind of throws your mind through a loop. But again, let's do a couple more tests. Green side, hit some balls and see how it goes. I'm gonna really try and get this one up in the air. Let's see how high I can hit it. I don't know, maybe 10 feet. <laughs> that thing went super high considering like, it was almost a half swing, it rolled off the back, but yeah, let's keep it going. I'm gonna do a bunch of different shots from here and. Then I'll give you my final thoughts at the end of the video. And remember, 250 likes will give away a 70 degree hummingbird that surprisingly performed extremely well, even though I was kind of doubting it at first. I'll tell you one thing you do have to be careful because this is an honest review and I want to give you guys as much like truth as I can. This thing makes massive divots. And when I say massive, I mean huge, because the head is so big. It does help you get through thick grass sometimes, but you can also just tear up like the, 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 the next to the green, you know, the green side fairway. So one thing you really have to be careful is that you don't take too much ground when you hit it, because I can really see that becoming an issue. not exactly sure how well those shots will come into play but like if you guys can see that or not the launch angle on these things is so incredibly high that like it's 10 degrees lofted higher than my lob wedge and my lob wedge I can get to go pretty high so that just gives you a little bit of perspective of how high these things are jumping right off the club but again you have to make sure you don't blade it and you don't take too much of a divot I'm going to hit the highest flop shot you've ever seen in the history of a driving range with a 70 degree hummingbird. Let's do it. Now this mat is not really a good representation of real life. In fact, I'm gonna hit it off the grass just so that way you guys get a good representation here. This is gonna be a one take, one type of thing because I don't have any other balls, so. Let's do it, let's hit it from right here. Swing hard. Get this thing to go in the air. I lied. There's two balls right there that I'm gonna go grab and hit. Just because I'm pretty sure I can get this thing to touch like the moon. All right, let's go grab those two balls. Let me lower the camera right here so you guys get a good view of me hitting them. And again, these things are gonna touch the moon. Just like GameStop and AMC stock, they're gonna touch the moon. All right, let's watch these things fly. So that's the divot problem. I'm gonna try and stand up as I hit this one to try and get rid of that divot. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun because it's just not natural, but that thing flew up, touched the sky, came back down to earth, and here we are. All right, final thoughts in the car. Let's get to it. Okay, all right. Wow. 
I did not expect it to perform that well. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really know where it would fit in, where I would like, where I would hit it and I would like it, where I would hit it and I wouldn't like it. I just had no idea, I had no real expectations coming into this club review because I've never really hit a 70 degree before and it was definitely unique and it was fun. I'm gonna be honest, I like that club a lot. I'm not gonna say I love it because it did have its limitations. Um, so let's make a quick recap of what our findings were. Again, as an amateur golfer, I am not a scratch golfer in any means. I am probably like an 18 handicap. I think the last time I got my handicap was 17 and a half. So again, I'm, I'm like a bogey golfer and I'm fine with that, but I'm trying to get better. And that club was fun. Around the green, it was fun. It was pretty dang accurate. If I'm aiming for a cup on a green and I'm within like 25 yards of the pin, I could probably put it to within 10 feet almost every time. And that's somebody that really kind of has prided himself on getting better at chipping and doing you know, a bunch of different greenside flops. That club was fun. Now, it, again, out of the sand, I think it does have its purpose. I think it might be one of the best clubs you can hit out of a green side sand with not a lot of sand in front of you. However, if you are in the fa a fairway sand or a fairway bunker, it's not going to be a club that you would use. And if you have a lot of sand in front of you, it would also be a pretty risky, dangerous club to hit. So for example, if there is maybe 15 yards of sand and you're on the back side of it and you have to hit over that, I probably wouldn't hit it because Again, I would rather have that distance and I would rather miss long than miss short and end up in the sand again. So um, again, the best use cases are short sand situations within 25 yards of the pin and anything you have to hit insanely high. You know, if you have to come up and over a bush or a tree that's pretty right in front of you, I think you can do it. I mean, you saw it when we hit it up and over the camera and different other situations where I just tried to blast it like at the range. The club did perform pretty dang well and I'm excited, I'm happy. Will I add it to the bag? I don't know because I don't know what it would replace. Right now I've been dialed in with my lob wedge, so I don't know if it would replace my lob wedge, but I do. I could see a scenario where you would wanna add this to the bag. If you don't play long, like for example, let's say you're a senior or uh, an older person and you were playing from gold tees and maybe you just don't have that distance in you anymore, and you want to be way more accurate in the short game than in the long game, I think that this club might actually be a great club to add to your bag or consider adding it to your bag. Now, again, we're going to look up the price and put it in here um, right about now, but I really do see where people would be excited about this club and where they would add to it. Now, again, I'm not sponsoring anything. I'm borrowing this club from my uncle, so this is a fair and honest opinion and overview. The limitations, however, again, longer sands, um, catching too much ground, creating too big of a divot nearby, which could cause you to not get the distance that you need or the height that you need, and blading it. If you can avoid those three things, this club might be something you should add to the bag. And again, 250 likes, and I'll help one of you guys add it to the bag. With that in mind, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you have hit a 70 degree or if you have hit this club specifically before, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Maybe you agree with me. Maybe you disagree. Maybe I said some things that just didn't ring well with you guys but again hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did smack the like button if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button we got videos coming out all the time about golf whether it is a challenge on the course or a club review or other fun things with friends definitely hit the subscribe button turn on all notifications so you never miss an upload and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace